Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. Hi. Hi. I'm Shannon. And I'm Nancy. And we're thrilled to be here with you guys live in the studio. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you, yes, my happy friend. Yes, to be here with you. On Monday, you know, we, we had a uh, holiday and had the day off, right. and I don't usually get to watch uh, daytime television, Right. but I happened to turn on for a couple of minutes and saw a couple of minutes of Kathy Lee and Hoda, Yeah. and, and I was like, oh, it's not, and not entirely all that different. They just no. have a lot more money, right. a lot more people doing their hair and it's makeup, hair and, and, the, makeup. and yeah. they're talking about a, a bigger variety of things than we are, but within, we are talking about all those things within the context of autism right. and we're not drinking in the morning no. so there's that um, <laughs> we can but really other, start other than that <laughs> and and the fact that I could fit Kathy Lee in one of my pant legs and she would still have room to move around but other than that it's very similar I just was like oh look at that they have a show too uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little show that they do. Anyway, uh, we got a big, big show here today. Yeah, we have a lot of good in the news stories too. Yes, I tried to make a couple that weren't. Last week we they were all bad. It right. Would be all bad all the time. We were hiding sharp implements from ourselves. Uh, so there's a couple of good stories in there mixed in with some. Pleh, yeah. Right. Uh, and then some great guests that we have: Caroline and Joey Fry from yeah. Artism. I can't wait to talk Joey's to them. Joey's a great artist, and we're going to hear about his. And he's making it work. Yeah, he's making it work. Making it work, and we love that. So, uh, but shall we jump in here with some mm -hmm. in the news? Uh, yeah, this was an interesting thing that you brought to my attention in Ask Amy, right, dear Amy? Yeah, well, I, we're both at an age where we, uh, <laughs> you know, what was the big one? Abby, right? Abby, dear Abby, dear Abby. and Ann Landers. Right. Uh, but now they are long since retired in many ways. Uh, right. But so now apparently there's Dear Amy. Right. I did not. Had you ever read Dear Amy before? I, I had read Dear Amy before. Okay. I, I must have missed Dear Amy. But there's Amy. And somebody wrote in a question that was very interesting to me and I think topical for a lot of people. Writing right. in and asking uh, if what she should do that this person has a 38, 36, excuse me, year old brother right. that she suspects maybe now after reading some things perhaps is on the spectrum. Right. And what do you do? Right. What do you do when that happens? And she goes through a bunch of different symptoms right that uh she thinks okay that her brother has always been a little bit aloof a Talk, little bit may, hardly makes eye contact talks in monotone rarely smiles and always seems uncomfortable yeah so. but has a job right and you know owns his own condo mm -hmm. and all of these things but i thought it was interesting because i think a lot of us are that are somewhere in the autism community are mm -hmm. met with a moment mm -hmm. when we have a friend that we see the friend's child, maybe some warning bells go mm -hmm, off for mm -hmm. us. Or now that our kid has been diagnosed with autism, we look and see someone in our family that we go, huh, is that maybe possibly mm -hmm. what's going on? I know that I experienced that after all these years, a couple of years ago, I went, huh, there's a person in my family that I thought, Perhaps. Could be on the spectrum. Especially after, I will be honest with you, after meeting adults mm -hmm. on the show and interviewing mm -hmm. them that weren't diagnosed until they were in their 30s. Right. Uh, and hearing why they went for the diagnosis, I, mm -hmm. I started going, oh my goodness, I, I have someone in my family that I care deeply about that I wonder if this would answer some questions. So what do yeah. you do? What do you do when that happens? What's the polite thing to do? Are you just a pain in the rump? if you say something. And I thought her answer was interesting. What did you think of her answer? I liked her answer. Um, Should we go ahead and read it? Sure. She says, I can't uh, de definitively identify or diagnose autism spectrum disorder in this context or any other, but based on what you describe, it does sound as if your brother might be on the spectrum. Identifying his tendencies and behavior and assigning a name to it might provide you with some insight and hopefully understanding and additional compassion towards your brother who seems to do well despite his challenges. She then goes on to advise her to explore her theory by reading up on Asperger's and ASD. And then if she chooses to share with the brother, make sure you do so with an open mind and heart. Don't present the information to him as now I know what's wrong with you. Yeah. Say this material will help give me insight and I thought you'd be interested too. He may not be interested in pursuing this, but knowing more can help you understand his particular gifts, tendencies, and challenges. Yeah. I, I mean, I think for an adult, I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, that, 
that really, if it's you wondering about someone in your life, that you do the reading mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that hopefully it will help you to be more compassionate and understanding right. and maybe a little bit more patient and a right. little bit more flexible yourself. Right. Right. And that if you decide to go to the person to not paint it in a negative light, because there's no need to do that, and to not diagnose them, because none of us have the credentials to do that, but to say, I found this interesting, I thought you might find this interesting too. Yeah, I love that. Now, when it's a child, I think it's entirely different. Um, I, and, you know, I know for me, if I have see and suspect that someone that I in my field of mm -hmm, vision mm -hmm. uh, that I'm having a conversation with I don't walk up to total strangers right although I want to right just the other day I wanted to uh -huh. um, that, that I saw a kid that was going like this and he was humming and turning around mm -hmm. in a circle and I saw a dad like kind of being rough with him and going mm -hmm. stop that mm -hmm. uh, and use some words that, and I wanted to go up and go you know, honestly, I did not. I refrained, but I wish now I had. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I believe that it's important that we go up and say, I know you probably don't want to hear this, right? But I wish somebody had said this to me, and you know, you should look into this and this mm -hmm. and ask these questions. Right. How do you feel about it? I feel that it's important to express concerns. I recently had a situation where uh, a very somebody very close to me. Um, has a child that is displaying signs and has only been diagnosed with a speech disorder. And I had concerns that, that it might be ASD. And I spoke to another family member, their grandmother, um, the grandmother, so it, it would be her daughter that she needs to speak to. And she did tell me her daughter's very sensitive about it. Well, who wouldn't um, be? We yeah. remember. We were. Right. We absolutely were. Right. But we also, both of us, lost time. Mm hmm Right. And and I don't want anybody else to lose time. Exactly. And and I often will apologize to people and say, forgive me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say some things and I'm going to be blunt because I lost time. Mm -hmm. And once, years ago, after my son had been diagnosed, um, somebody asked me, they said, my child was just diagnosed. What should I do? And I mm -hmm. said, well, you know, you might want to consider doing ABA. Well, you might want to consider this. And mm -hmm. you should consider a 40-hour program. But I said it as if it was a choice. Right. And I, I was so proud of myself. I was like, I have given her all the information, mm -hmm. but not really in the right context. Mm -hmm. And two years later, she came up to me and was so mad at me. Really? And, and pointed her finger in my face and said, how dare you even look at me? You cost me time. You knew what I needed. And you didn't tell me. You knew, you knew better. You knew that I needed to do this like it was the most important thing and you did not say to me, act like your house is on right, fire right. and do everything right now. And she was absolutely right and I apologize. She still doesn't want anything to do with me and I don't blame her for that. But now I tell people that story and I say, I'm so sorry, I've pledged that I will never have a parent tell me again that I didn't tell them. Mm -hmm. It's on you what you want to do with it. But I'm going to give you the information right now, and I'm going to tell you how important it is, and then what you do with it is up to you. But I need to have a clear conscience when I leave this conversation. Yeah. So it's hard, and people don't like you. I didn't like the person who told me. Mm -hmm. When somebody finally said something to you, mm -hmm. were you just, because you, you took, it took you a long time to get somebody to be honest. Were you just grateful at that point? No, or I wasn't. Ticked? I was ticked off. Yeah. And then later I was grateful to them. Of course, yeah. I was too. But it's hard to hear. Very hard. And it feels like people are judging you and your kid. Right. Regardless of how you, you feel about it, it, that's what it feels like as the, as mm -hmm. the person hearing mm -hmm. it. So... For those of us telling, we just have to get through that, I think. I'm not, I'm not having anybody else waste time because I couldn't suck it up. Mm -hmm. Be mad at me. Right? <laughs> right. Okay. Interesting so, story on? here on um, a, a, a um, drug Yes. that is undergoing testing. Absolutely. We're hearing more and more about this. You know, when we started doing this show, we would talk about drug testing. We would go, okay, but, you know, now they're doing the mo mouse model. and we're right. Right. But we're seeing many drugs now getting into human trials in phase two and phase three of, of human trials. And it's, it's getting very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but Suramin... Uh, is, is a drug that's being specifically looked at. There's in San Diego, Dr. Robert Navu uh, was testing 2,000 drugs and he's found one that may help. 
uh, and that ceramin. And he suspected the cause of autism might be me metabolic dysfunction, which I've heard before. Absolutely, absolutely. We've been looking at how it affects the immune system mm -hmm. and how it affects the met metabolics. Mm -hmm. So um, he is a professor of genetics and the co-director of the Mitochondrial and Metabolic Disease Center at UC San Diego. So he has now tested Suramin on a clinical trial of 10 boys. Yeah, five, five that got the, drug got the drug and five that did not. And um, he's saying that it's pretty in interesting. Pretty interesting thing. Yeah. Children begin to talk sometimes for the first time in sentences in their life after taking this drug. That's pretty incredible. Uh, so... Some children had learned to tie their shoes for the first time, and other children had learned to zip up a jacket. These fine motor skills were motor memory that had been retained. Uh, so in any case, we're, we're going to be, there said next there will be several phase two trials to determine safety and efficacy. Uh, he suspects it will be three to five years before phase three trials begin. Why does it take so long, three to five years? Well, I, you know, I appreciate that they're checking for safety mm -hmm. and seeing mm -hmm. long-term effects. Um, I do. I appreciate mm -hmm. that because we don't want to rush drugs uh, and find out later on. I mean, that's what happened with all kinds of drugs, thalidomide, things like that. But it is interesting that when there's a whole lot of money, drugs get through a lot faster. So um, I don't know what that's about. Uh, you know what? Uh, Let's end on this good story. Okay, this is good. So, but I want to talk a little bit. You sent me yesterday a change.org petition. Petition, petition yes. Uh, about a young boy, uh, Noah Britton. This is a picture of him. Doesn't he, he re reminds me of Wyatt. He does, me too. Right? Yeah. And look at the joy on that boy's face. Out on the football field. Right. And he's playing for his high school football team. He's been playing for the last two years mm -hmm. and he loves it. But the school is telling him, and more importantly, they have petitioned the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, mm -hmm. and they are saying that he cannot play next year. Right. The circumstances are that Noah is, uh, he's a senior, because right. he has been in high school for four years, but he's on the autism spectrum. So he's gonna be sticking around for another three years, right. because that's what the law provides for, for kids that need a little bit more work. Right. Three more years to do high school in before they get kicked out into mm -hmm. the regular system. Mm -hmm. Well, Noah's a bit of a trailblazer because mm -hmm. I don't think that this issue has come up before with autism, but there is a rule that the North Carolina High School Athletic Association has that says you only get eight semesters to play football and that those semesters, you're on a clock. It starts the first semester of your freshman mm -hmm. year and you have those eight semesters to play football and when those eight semesters are over, you're done, high school football is over for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I called them yesterday, the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, and I spoke to James Alverson. He's the Assistant Commissioner of Media Relations and Special Events. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a very frank discussion, because I said, you know, I'm calling, we're gonna cover this story. I, it says in the petition that he can't play on a technicality. I just want to understand what the technicality mm -hmm. is. And he said, it's not a technicality, it's a rule. a rule. And we follow the rules. The rules are freshman, eight semesters, you're done, but and he, then you have to transition. He didn't play as a freshman. Doesn't matter. Correct? He did not play as a freshman or as a sophomore. And James said to me, you know, it's kind of a shame because mm -hmm. he sort of missed out. He could have played, but mm -hmm. he missed out. Mm -hmm. And I said, but what if he couldn't play those two years because he wasn't ready? Because mm -hmm. with autism, sometimes you're not ready till you're ready. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, no, but the rule is the rule. And I just have to follow the rule. I have to implement the rule. They did appeal. And he said, we've had people petition before, not because of autism, because mm -hmm. of other things. I mm -hmm. said, what if... What would have happened if he'd had a broken leg in his right. freshman year? Right. He said, yeah, no, we've had that come up before. You still don't get an extra semester because okay. you weren't medically ready. And I said to him, but it's important to know why. Why do we have this rule? Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, you know, former teacher, so I'm just guessing that maybe the rule is partially that you don't want people that are... 45 right, coming in right, and still late. Right. You don't, and you especially probably put this rule in place because uh, you don't want kids that deliberately flunk out in their senior year so that they can stick around and play high school football mm -hmm. for another year, the glory days, mm -hmm. right? And he said, yep, it's that and many other things, but it's the rule. So it's the rule, it's the rule, it's the rule. And I think that we need to not just petition. 
uh, for this young man to play mm -hmm. another year, we need a petition to change the rule. Mm -hmm. So that the rule says what the rule needs to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because f if you are in good academic standing, and maybe we need to put in a consideration of an age mm -hmm. that we don't want people that are 25. Like, right. I don't know. But if you're in good academic standing and you're still a high school student, I said to him, I said, look, this is kind of amazing. Here's this young man. How many kids with autism have you had be successful on the football team? Yeah. Why are we taking it away from him? Right. Because we have a rule. Well, if the rule doesn't fit... You know, maybe we need to amend the rule so that the rule is more specific uh -huh. so that we don't have kids flunking out. But this kid is not flunking out. Yeah. He just needs more years. Right. So I want to encourage you to sign the petition. If you um, go on change.org, uh, sign the petition. They're trying to get 10,000 signatures, mm -hmm. and they're very close. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe that will make it so that this family can go back and say, can we look at the rule? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this is the thing with autism is that we want to be a part of, right? It's that thing that I'm always showing that, con that cartoon mm -hmm. that shows equality and justice. We mm -hmm. don't want equality. That's not what we're looking for in the autism community. It shows the three kids standing at a track meet and they're all, one of them's very tall and there's a curtain in front of them. One's mm -hmm. very tall and he can see what's happening at the track mm -hmm. meet. Mm -hmm. One of them, the curtain comes up to his eyes and he can see half of what's happening at the track meet. And the other one is short, he can't see anything. And that's what equality looks like. But then they show you the cartoon again with justice and it shows boxes so that the kid who's tall can still see, but the kid who was only seeing this much gets a little bit of a boost so that he can see everything and that the kid who's shorter gets a box to stand on so now they can all see mm -hmm. that's justice that's what we need for this kiddo but in order for that to happen the rule has to get more specific they're not going to entertain any arguments about making an exception for this kid right. that was very clear they follow the rules so let's change the rule yes get on board give this mom a signature so that she can run back to them and say change the rule the rule doesn't fit for our kid Think again. Didn't we have a video about the twins that found solace? Oh, in... oh yes, 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 yes. So let's. Uh, so we've got two stories left. Right, two stories. Okay, left. great. Uh, thank you for reminding yeah, me. Yeah, we about. have a great video with this one. We yeah, I don't think we're going to show the video. I think we're going to you just tell people okay, to, where to go. Well, we don't want to take somebody else's video, but okay. we're going to tell them where they can go to watch the video. Okay. Is that right, Samantha? We're not showing the video, right? I don't All right, have this Samantha. particular story concerned two autistic twins who were severely affected. There is a picture of them. And we've had their mom on the show before. Oh, you have? Yes. She's got an amazing book, They're, and she's an amazing mom. This is an amazing family, the, uh, the Schneiders, correct? Okay, yeah. yes. Uh, Robin Schneider. And Dad had written to me and said, our friends in the Netherlands have done this amazing uh, video and they're doing a promotion there about these two boys to show how much physical activity makes a difference. Yeah, can really help our kids. And these, we've had mom on before on the show and she's written an amazing book. These two young, young men have some really extensive challenges. Yes. Uh, these, are, these are not the kids that are, you know, in the category, I hate the term, high functioning, uh -huh, uh -huh, right? Right. These are kids who have some significant, they're nonverbal, right. they have some significant issues, and this has not been easy for this family, but first one of the sons started to run. And then the other one. And, then, and they run, they just ran in the Boston Marathon. Right. They're, they run, they're really oh, accomplished runners. My gosh, and now the whole family runs together. Right. It's such an inspirational story. So do we, are we able to show them what the link is to go to look at the video? Okay. okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to post, post the link later. later. Okay. Um, but um, I just think how wonderful that a story of two boys here in the United States, that, that the parents found something that really works. Right. And that, you know, I, I have a friend who always says, run your yayas out. Yeah. Right? They're, to see these boys run, and you've got to watch the video because the concentration. Yeah with which and how closely they are able to run mm -hmm. and train mm -hmm. and and to see that level of, of concentration on something so specific it's amazing yeah, i think it is it's amazing. got to be inspirational to families who have have 
you know, kids with challenges of any amount, that a certain amount of exercise can help to focus mm -hmm. and can, can help to quiet all the sensory mm -hmm. things. It's like a form of meditation yes. that's really, really good for you. So we absolutely love this family. Um, and you can definitely check out the interview that we did w with mom before. Definitely buy her book. What was her uh, book about? It's about the boys and running and how... Uh, first one boy started running and then the second boy started running and then mom and dad got involved too and started running and that this is what they do as a family yeah this is this is what has brought them and bound them all together mm -hmm. and helped them to be able to communicate with their kids mm -hmm. help them to be able to do everything okay so uh, in any case check out uh, this video and they're they're showing it um, so that other families can now in other countries can mm -hmm. learn the physical activity is a great, great thing for autism. Okay, and then our and last we story. Have the storm, the girl who dresses up as a stormtrooper to ask a boy with autism to the prom. How much do we love this? That was just the beginning. Yes. Um, um, so this is coming to us from Idaho Falls. I've got my papers all twisted sideways. Yes. Sorry. But um, the little, the girl, the not the little girl, fifteen-year-old, yes. Shean Ritchie, went above and beyond to help a boy she had never met have a night he'll likely never forget. She learned about a special needs prom. And she heard about Ian Tao Benjamin, um, a 15-year-old Bonneville High School student. And she found out that he loves Star Wars, and so does she, she does as well. What I love about this is that this 15-year-old girl has been working with special needs individuals for years. She has mm -hmm. a particular passion for this, and she heard about this young man and said... I'm going to ask him to the prom. But it's a very big deal now in a lot of places, especially in Idaho, that it's not just about going to the dance or whatever. Now right. it's how you get asked. Right. It's it's bigger than what people, you know, do for engagement things okay. now. They do sky riders and they okay. do insane things. And so this girl researched about him and found out uh, she sent what like a cake to the house and then showed up in a stormtrooper costume to ask him she decorated his room with posters and a t-shirt a dark fader cake that said the force has a big surprise for you and really she, amazing right and made him feel very special they went to the prom together they danced they had a really good time and i absolutely love this and i think what what an amazing story about what life can be like uh when somebody cares and is inclusive and i I can't help but think what a good time this young man had mm -hmm. and um, what that must have been like for his family to feel like he was included and he was a part of everything. The, the community then celebrated this young woman mm -hmm. and made a big fuss over her. And I both love that and find it a little bit like, uh, won't it be great when we get to a day when this kind of thing is so normal that we right. don't have to cover it here right. and nobody will have to celebrate a person because they did something that was very human. Right. That'll right. be a good day. Good We're long for that day. But until then, we do, we celebrate her for, That's right. for being a trailblazer, showing the world how it can be. All right. We, uh, we've gone on quite a while. It, uh, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back with Joey Fry and his mom, Carol. Yes, he's got artism, uh, his own business. He's quite an artist, and we're going to hear about his efforts with that. Yes, and so that will be an amazing thing. Stick with us. We'll be back after these messages. If you're watching Autism Live, chances are you care about the life of someone or perhaps many people living with autism. You spend countless hours trying to make a better life for them. It may not have been easy for you to watch the show today. You know, sometimes you could be juggling so many balls in the air, you feel like a circus performer. I remember recently saying to a friend that as the mother of a son with autism, plus all the other challenges in my life, I feel like I'm carrying a tray full of glasses of water, and that if one of them topples over, the whole thing is going to go crashing down. This empowerment moment is all about you. Now, I'm not a doctor or a therapist, but over the last nine years in my autism journey, I've learned some things that have helped me shift from being a victim to having hope. See, I've been in that place 
down on the kitchen floor on my knees praying for answers of what happened to my child. I've been in that place covered with blood and tears after one of Wyatt's giant tantrums where I said, where has my fairy tale life gone? I have a feeling you're a member of that kitchen floor club too. It's been a process, but I've come from that place of being a victim to becoming an advocate for my son Wyatt and for many others as the executive director of ACT Today, or Autism Care and Treatment Today. Let's start with reframing the way you think about yourself and your child. I want you to say after me, I'm an activist. That's right. I'm an activist because just by watching this program you are taking positive steps to make the world a better place for your child or someone else living with autism. You are a positive force of action in the world. I want you to start thinking of your so-called disability as an opportunity because it's within our challenges that our greatness is revealed. That's where we find our courage and resiliency. And parenting a child with autism is one of the greatest challenges a parent can face. You have the choice to see this as a journey of self-discovery. Some people take expeditions to climb Mount Everest to see what they're made of. You don't have to travel that far because parenting a child with autism is an expedition of the soul. Until next time, stay strong and keep the faith. And we are back. And as promised, we are joined by very special guests. We've got Caroline and Joey Fry. Welcome to the show, Caroline and Joey. Thank you. Good to have you here. Good and to have you too. Yes, we're here to talk about Joey's amazing artwork. Um, <laughs> And Joey, can you describe a little bit of your artwork to us? Because it, it is artwork with a difference. All right. Um, I don't know when to begin, but it's basically brightly colored. It's, it's paint, and it's uh, kind of like a, a combination of uh, traditional folk art. Uh, you might say cartoonish, mm -hmm. sort of stylish. I mean, about the details. Oh, the details. So every time I'm done painting, I use a marker pen or basically a pen, and I put some uh, details to it to give them more uh, likeness or. So how, how about how people give you the details for that? Oh, yeah. So, so my mom uh, receives calls from customers, and they give out a specific. Uh, details and a list of specific things of what they like, what they love to do, what's their hobby, and what's their favorite sports team. Stuff and like that. Yep. Yeah, all that stuff like that. And so you incorporate and, you incorporate that into the art piece. Oh yes, it it builds up a story. Okay, and you've got. Can you tell us about some of the stories that you've done? Some of the artwork and the stories. Any kind. Yeah, any kind. Give us an example of something you've done. Okay, so right now I am working on for a customer. Or actually, maybe I should just tell you about the one I, I have done before. For uh, this is for a a customer who lives in Mississippi, and uh, her uh, son is in the. He's a, a sailor. A sailor. He's uh -huh. patriotic. He has a, a wife and, and son. Uh, he's been to uh, Ireland, Spain, and the Canary Islands. So what I did for the Canary Island part is I put little yellow specks all over the island to represent canaries. And originally I was going to put Tweety Bird like a... A sand drawing of Tweety Bird. You know what Tweety Bird is, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but I decided to scrap that idea and I just left it with just 
little flying canaries flying around the island. <laughs> That's great. To I love Canary it. Island. And it's so, literal, right? Yeah, it's it's literal. So you mm -hmm. have created this wonderful business for yourself that capitalizes on your talents, which mm -hmm. we absolutely love. And it's called Artism. And if people want to order a custom print, where should they, how do they go about doing that? Um, my Facebook page and um, through telephone. Okay, and we've got artismbyjoey.com up on the, the website there, and then you've got a, a, a Facebook page. What is your Facebook page? Is it Artism? Artism by Joey. Artism, Artism by, by Joey. Joey. Okay, fabulous. Oh. So let's back up a little bit and talk about how, uh, and Mom, maybe you can fill in some blanks for, for him as well, too, because he was little, but when did we first start to notice that maybe Joey was differently abled? Um, like, uh, how I was able to speak. Yeah. So let's go back to when you were younger and. Okay. Um, my, uh, may I, may I, um, start with, uh, when you were really little, um, and then you can pick it up. How about that? Or take turns or go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> let me start this thing from, uh, I was born around 1997, April 22nd, which was earth day which was actually my favorite holiday. I can understand why that would be. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, when I was when I was four years old, three or four, three or four, I was able to say my first ever word, and that word was gondola. Gondola, OK. That's a pretty impressive oh, first please. word. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So Joe didn't didn't speak until a little bit later. Yeah. But he was drawing before that. Okay. And was expressing things that he wanted to tell us with with pictures. Uh -huh. right? Exactly. It's kind of like communicating. Yep. Absolutely. And so when did you get a diagnosis of autism? You got a diagnosis of, of Asperger's. Is that correct? Yeah. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. When you were about well. I think we got the formal diagnosis when he was six, but we were we were pretty clued in before that happened. Right. Like three or four. Yeah. But once like he started said. speaking, he started speaking quite a bit, correct? And still is. Right. And I still do. <laughs> and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But you have had uh, a pretty amazing upbringing. You've got some uh, incredible parents. Your mom there with you now. We uh, got a, we, we got a list of mantras for the Fry household that I thought were really inspirational and that people might get a kick uh, uh, about. Do you guys want to tell us what the what they are? Or you want me to read them? Go ahead and read them. Okay. It says here that uh, the mantras in the Fry household. Number one, we emphasize that we are good, uh, what we are good at, and use it for all it's worth. We try never to dwell on what we can't do. How powerful is that? Number two, we are a team and we help each other. And number three, we work hard. I want to get this framed and put it on the refrigerator, like across <laughs> the refrigerator, so you have to move it out of the way to open the refrigerator. Because I think this is a recipe for success, Mom. Yes, it sure is. Who came up with these? Oh, it's just been the way it's, you know, just the way we've done things here. I mean, it's if you start looking at the things that you can't do then then you really can't do them right. so um, joey's really and joey's just a positive kid you know he always has well been. young adult yeah you are i'm not. 21 you are you are that's that is true yeah. i guess i understand in high school you were like the prom king and prom prince and prom king prom prince and prom king and homecoming, don't forget that. And homecoming, wow, what a list of accomplishments. And now your artwork has won some awards. Tell us about that. Oh, this, this is a very good one, okay? So when I was in junior high school, uh, when I was uh, 17 years old. That's high school. Yeah, that's still high school. I made this picture of of a, a monster attacking the city, and I named him Monsteroid. And so you won. Well, yes. So um, I was going to the state fair, and I saw my picture on display, and it said it won first place in best of show. And 
I was like a rock star. <laughs> I was like a big it trigger my uh my fame, but not not like Justin Bieber fame. <laughs> but someday, someday. I wanna say too, not only do you know do you have your immediate family, but your aunt Sissy has written in and she said she wants everybody to know how very proud that they are of you, Joey, and that you've come so far and that the sky is the limit for you, and I believe that. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you got your aunt message from Aunt Sissy. I, I am amazed at all the things that you've been able to do, uh, and now you're a college student. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what you're studying in college. I'm saying college of, okay, so... It's um, it's basically just art, fine, fine arts. Uh -huh. And right now I'm taking art history two. I have I'm done with art history one, and it art history was a huge headache. <laughs> it was a headache. It was hard. I bet it's hard to you too. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, sure. Art history is not easy. No, a lot to learn. Absolutely. And memorize. I, mean, I like the I like the style of the. Uh, arts from history. I, I like prehistoric art because I love prehistory. And so is that your favorite period or are, do you have some favorites from other times as well? Um, oh, um, I love um, I love um, the Mesozoic era mm -hmm. and you know what it is? Yeah. Um, it's the age of the dinosaurs. Right. Because I love dinosaurs. Right. Okay. And so, but there's art from back then? Well, not really, but except for footprints that they left behind. So you might call that art. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Uh, well, and, and we just want to do a shout out to your mom, too, because, uh, you know, there's a transition that gets made when, when between the time that you're 18 and 26. And, and we see your mom working really hard to let you be independent and stand on your own. And that's Joey, a pretty incredible thing, right? Joey has a really, really phenomenal support system. I mean, he's, his dad is, we're calling him now the director of operations and logistics. He's, he's the dude who gets him to the places that he needs to go. Love it. His grandparents, uh, sister, brother, sister-in-law i mean we've got a lot of people helping us so it's it's definitely a team effort to be That's sure great. yeah and uh speaking of um 18 to 26 um i was kind of figuring or maybe wanted to be independent like much earlier because mm. because i'm a little desperate <laughs> you're, des you're desperate to be independent and that's a good oh, thing yeah. that's a really good, it is a good thing. thing um but you know, Out of all the stuff that you do, what I do, I mean, you cook your own meals. Yes, I, I cook my meal. I actually cook my own ramen noodles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I make, I make souffle. You make souffle? Make... Where'd you learn that? Where well, I learned that? Well, since I was not too long ago, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I need to try something healthy. So dad introduced me quiche or souffle, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I learned some basic ingredients, eggs, cheese, onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper, stir them up. And uh, you don't have to put the timer in. You just have to put it in while the oven is hot and check them every once in a while until it's done. Maybe we need to write a cookbook. <laughs> a that would be cool. A cookbook with your own art illustrations. That would be very that cool. That would be very cool. Yeah, but I got I got my cookbook in my head right now. Okay, right, good. We need to download good. that. Well, I think All you right. guys are doing an amazing job, and because now at 21, you are an entrepreneur and you have started your own business, and that's amazing. And again, this business is artism. And if people want to write to you, we've got the the website there on the screen. For just a very small fee, they can mm -hmm. get a piece of custom artwork that's done, commissioned for somebody else. Mm -hmm. They write to you and tell you details <clears throat> about the person, and you create a piece of art that is specifically just for them. It's and an you also thing. do greeting cards, is that correct? Oh, yeah. I did greeting greeting cards before. Um, want to see some greeting cards? Yes, we sure. do. Okay, we love greeting cards. Um, one right there. Um, I only got one, so 
Can you see? Beautiful. Yeah, love it. What That's does it. that one mean? Uh, this is for a lady who loves book and wine, and she likes to travel. Does she? Yeah. She likes to, so I put this. These are cartoon characters based on, based on her uh, books, detail. Books and wine. Books and wine. Okay. I absolutely and I love it. Them, and I made them into explorers, and what they're doing right now is that they're exploring in a, in an ancient tomb in Egypt. Okay. I well, love so, it. love the personalization on all of these. And so what is your dream, Joey? What is it that you want to be able to do? Oh, I got several of them. Okay. It's pretty big, so you guys ready? I'm yes. ready. All right. Hold on to your butts. Okay. Oh, well, all right. Well, sorry about that. That's, That's right. okay. Okay, so I want to keep taking on with my business. Mm-hmm. Uh, Continue on working with my business. Uh, get a certificate once I'm done with Jimena. And possibly I would like to go to Burbank and make cartoon characters. Okay. Yeah. Like for Disney. Work in the film business. Yeah, like for Disney or Warner Brothers or uh, Pixar. Or, uh -huh. uh, I mean, yeah. Cause, cause, a dream. I mean, because I love cartoons. I want to see my art in motion. Mm -hmm. Animation. Uh-huh. Uh, basically, two animation, like 3D and 2D, or cell, whatever you like mm -hmm. to call them. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to do any animation, Joey? I did. I did uh, occasionally. I uh, I started to attempting to use uh, a little... Uh, Add thing on my phone, which is called stop motion, and I did the first time, and it turned out really well. I haven't used it recently, right now. I think we need to set up a meeting between you and Danny Bowman. Yeah, she's a Danny, animator. Danny Bowman is an, an animator who just graduated from college. She went to to college full ride. She's an animator, and she teaches animation. She's on the spectrum uh -huh. too, and I bet she would love to talk to you. Maybe we can arrange. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can arrange a, a phone call between the two of you. All right. Uh, and if you come out to Burbank, if that ever, uh, if you get that together, let us know because uh, you know we're we're very close to Burbank. Yes, we are. Really? What's it like there? What's it like in Burbank? Oh, I God. love Burbank. Burbank is one of my favorite <laughs> places, honestly. Uh, there are lots of flowers grow in Burbank. Yes, and, and it's, it tends to be warm all the time. And, you you know, it looks just like every other place mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. There's palm trees and blooming flowers. But every so often, you know, there'll be stores, store, store, grocery store, and then Disney Studios. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a very fun thing. So, my mom loves Disney because... Do. And does it have any crime? Well, I mean, like every bit. other place, but it's a pretty nice place. Burbank I, is pretty good. Because, cool. all right, and um, my mom has been to California before, uh, pretty recently, but not in Burbank, but in the northern part of California. I was right. actually living the last week. And she said it was cold. Yeah, well, it can be. It can be. We, yeah. we have a cold snap always in May, but the rest of the time yes. it's warm as can be. Uh, so you'll have to come and see it for yourself, Joey. All right. <laughs> yes. Right now, outside is kind of wet. It's wet here, too. It rain, it's raining here. Right. Uh, but I think that you're remarkable, Joey. I think you've got some amazing things going on and some amazing things that are going to happen for you in the future. And I think that part of it is because you are so talented, but that you have a great group of people behind you, yes, you do. who you are great supporting support you and helping you get this all happening. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'd love to have you on the show today, and we wish you the best of luck with your, with your artism. All right. All right. Take all care, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So fun. Uh, have I a know. nice day. <laughs> so fun and so amazing, and uh, and and I I love that uh, there were times that you know he, mom was going to say something and, and he, he was just like nope right, I've, I got I've got control. this and That's right. uh, I live in that neighborhood and I think you do sometimes too where you know it's like we don't we don't get to talk anymore right because <laughs> our kids are going to say it for themselves and that's a really good thing and we want to thank Aunt, Aunt Sissy for writing in too let's take a short break and then we'll okay. come back to close out the show okay, stick great. with us. Parents 
a parent, one of the most frightening things there is is when your child wanders away or elopes. This is when they leave an area without permission. And we know, science has shown that over 50% of children on the autism spectrum will engage in this kind of behavior. But we don't have to just accept it as fact. There are things that we can do to teach our children how to appropriately ask when they want to go someplace. But before we can teach, we have to know why they're doing it. Are they wandering away to go to something or are they wandering away to escape something? Really important that we know that. And once we do know that, then we can put in place these really effective teaching strategies. I want to remind you though that if your child is engaging in this kind of behavior, it's really important to work with an expert. Get professional help. They'll be able to effectively figure out why your child is doing it and put an intervention in place that's effective. And when you stop and think about it, there's nothing more important than keeping our children safe. You might be asking yourself, a VIP, what on earth is that? You say howdy, we say hi. Let's get wild, let's get wild. Let's get, let's get, 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 let's get wild. Hi there, I'm Lisa Ackerman. Welcome to the show. So the goal of today, we're going to make meatballs. Let's get started. So again, I'm going to take roughly a pound of my ground organic turkey and I'm going to add in the secret vegetable. So if your kid doesn't like vegetables, don't cook in front of them, okay? Have them watch a movie or something. But you definitely want to make sure they're not watching because then they won't eat it. So, and here we go with the egg and our breadcrumbs. I'm just adding salt and pepper to taste. If you think about kids' shapes and sizes, you wanna think small, small shapes, small hands. So your oven should be preheating at about 400 degrees. We're gonna kick into the oven here and look at our meatballs. I did flip them halfway through the 20 odd minute. So we'll put, just like Julia Childs, there's our finished product right there. These are good. Cooking is easy. You don't have to be afraid of it. But we want to hear from you. If you can let us know what recipes are important to you, maybe convert a recipe from a traditional flour or gluten based to a, a gluten free or an allergy free, we're here to help. So you get to us. You can email us at autismlive at gmail.com. You can reach out on Facebook at facebook.com slash autismlive or reach out at Taka Now. So, I know you're having a great day. I had a lot of fun cooking with you in the kitchen, but I'll tell you before we end, I gotta have more meatballs. Have a great day. You say hi, we say hi. Let's get wild, let's get wild. Let's get, let's get, let's get wild. Let's get. Welcome back. We've got a lot of things that are happening uh, yeah, this week and next you've week. You've got going want, on next week on so, the show. So, well, I wanna start with the fact that we're not doing a live show tomorrow because I have uh, been told that I can't do everything in the world and I keep thinking that I can. Um, and that's when you get your cape caught in the, your superhero cape caught in the fan. And I did last week. I got my superhero cape caught in the fan because uh, I'm doing uh, a one woman show that the world premiere of it is tomorrow at five. Which and, is I'm so proud of you. Well, and I'm proud of you too because this wouldn't have happened without you. We were going to do this together, and and you. We talked about this before on the show. We don't need to, uh, but you know. But I want to thank you for giving me permission to go on on my own and. Uh, little crazy and it's called the autism monologues it's called the autism monologues world premiere is tomorrow at five and so we're not doing a show tomorrow because last week i got vertigo i just i right. know where i got vertigo right. and so i'm just trying to take it a little bit easier um but so that's premiering tomorrow and so we're not doing a live show then next week we're back and we are doing live shows on wednesday and on thursday and it's a power-packed week of amazing guests that uh, one of the other shows that's opening at the Hol Hollywood Fringe which is where my show is opening is a musical called Best Buddies the Musical mm -hmm. and it's an inclusive cast with people of all abilities in it it's the kind of thing that makes us like cry and clap and go crazy and right? who's producing that? Uh, well it's written by a gentleman Connor Hanny who's going to be on the show next Thursday mm -hmm. to talk about they're doing their preview this weekend so, but they'll have more performances throughout the month. So he's going to be on the show next week to talk about this amazing musical. Okay. So that's a really wonderful thing. Then also on Thursday, we are going to have the folks uh, from Camp Ed. 
that, as you know, uh, Ed Asner has been on the show before. He's somebody that you and I both love. Right. I love to be in the room when he's with you because he always tells you that you have spunk. <laughs> and that always makes me happy. It really uh, it does in a way that I can't even begin to explain, right? Yeah. Um, but they have for a long time been working on... Uh, one of Ed's legacies is going to be the Ed Asner Family Center, uh, where families can come and participate and do other things. So this summer is the kickoff for Camp Ed. There will be three separate weeks of different activities for individuals where they're going to get to do things like make their own comic book. They're going to get to perform. They're going to get to dance. They're doing this in conjunction with a lot of other autism groups here in the mm -hmm. Valley. Uh, Spec Labs is mm -hmm. going to be there, and I haven't even talked about Spec Fest. I can't even believe I haven't brought that up yet. But um, but so Spec Labs is going to be there, participating and okay. doing videos with them. Uh, Joanne Laura from Autism Movement Therapy mm -hmm. is going to be there, and you know that's an amazing movement that helps center on the brain. Yes, we know that there. Are, when we cross the midline, midline that it affects right, right. cognitive, and so she has a very amazing program. Um, so they're all going to be with us next week in the studio. Matt Asner, Nava Paskowitz, uh, Garth uh, Herberg from mm -hmm. Spec Labs, and Joanne Laura from Autism Movement Therapy. They're all going to be talking here talk, about Camp Ed. Talking about Camp Ed and some of the things that kids can do there. And I, I know that sometimes it feels like a tease to you guys that it's like, oh, well, that's happening in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's not happening in your neck of the woods. But that's you should never think of it that way because it's starting here in Los Angeles but if you want to camp ed where you are next summer I can tell you that all that needs to happen for that is that somebody needs to get motivated and maybe that's you mm -hmm. maybe you're the person that needs to make that happen and mm -hmm. it, you can make that happen for next summer I'm telling you they will work with you to make that happen okay so um, that's definitely going to be happening plus you and I are going to be here for let's talk uh, let's talk autism and uh, we, we're told that we have Dr. Grand Pichet next week. We'll okay. Keeping our fingers crossed, okay. and hopefully that we will. But it's a very big week, and this weekend, on top of all of that, so we're not doing a show tomorrow, but on Sunday, we will be live for at least part of the time from the sensory-friendly production that's being done by The Miracle Project. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Kochi talking about this amazing performance that they, they're doing. And it's uh, about love. It's about love. Uh, and, and I've heard from insiders who have seen some of the previews that it's like big time theater get chills right. uh, to see these young people talking about how much they want to date, how much they want to experience love. So I'm very excited that we're going to be at the Sensory Friendly that starts at 1 o'clock on Sunday. But so figure we'll be there and hopefully be doing some mm -hmm. interviews in the half hour before. Take a look at our Facebook page. We were at SpecFest, I want to say, a week ago, which is the big gala that they do. And um, our plan was uh, to do a big live uh, presentation and some things, you know, I was starting to get dizzy, things happened, but we did do a live presentation of the band playing. And we didn't show you the videos because we didn't want to cheat you out of, you need to go to speclabs. Uh, org and take a look at some of the videos. I know I called you about it and said, Nancy, they're doing something really amazing there. That what, what they are doing, the artistic freedom that they are putting in motion for those kids. You know how sometimes you have something that you're like, well, what I'd like to do is this, mm -hmm. but I don't really know how to, and I don't right. really know what to do. Right. And you wish that there was somebody in your life who was like, okay, well, step one is this. Right. Now we've checked that off. Step right. two is this. This is what they're doing for these kiddos. Um, we featured some of them on the show um, in the weeks before the performance. And I I'll tell you, one of the young men that we had on the show who was so inspired, they were both so inspirational. But here's this young man who said, well, what I really wanted to do was put out a CD. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm a rapper and I want to do meditation videos and I want to put out a CD. And, mm -hmm. I, and I can tell you, I'm sure that there are a million people who are like, okay, honey, whatever. Right. Spec Labs said, okay, let's do that. Let's do then. it. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I would do his meditation tape. He's amazing. And then I saw him rap, and the kids got real talent. So I just think that the work that they're doing is really, really amazing. I think we need to give our kids more of these opportunities mm -hmm. to speak and do. And, and then the other piece of it, to see that they have a community of friends together, that they are artists together. Mm -hmm. I, I mean... 
honestly, is there anything better than that for our kids?